Hello and welcome back to Educational Mechanics. I'm Matt and in this video we're going to look a bit deeper into the air braking system and in particular at the quick release valve, giving you an understanding of how it works and why we need them. We'll first look at them on a vehicle layout showing how they work in a circuit and then look a bit deeper into the valve to see exactly how it works. A quick recap on what we already know, but if you want a bit of a refresher, have a look at our Introduction to Air Brakes video. There's also a link down in the description. On our air braking system, we've got an engine driven compressor that supplies a reservoir which holds compressed air ready for use. The reservoir supplies the driver's controls. The driver controls where the air goes using the foot control valve for the service brakes and the hand control valve for the secondary and parking brakes. Whether you have a quick release valve fitted in the system or not, a timely release of the brakes is just as important as the brake application. And allowing compressed air to escape from a system takes more time than putting it in there, as the air travel time increases as the pressure decreases. When you take your foot off the foot pedal or apply the part brake, you want that action to happen quickly. To achieve this, a quick release valve is fitted in the circuit between the air supply and the brake chamber. This can be both in the service and the secondary lines. Let's arrange some components onto a vehicle layout to bring it into context. We're just going to have the foot control valve, some air lines, and I'll put some S cams in so you can see the brakes working. We'll put some more components on shortly. So, the driver applies the foot brake, which sends air down to the actuators to apply the brakes. When the driver releases the foot brake, the air needs to come back to the foot control valve to exhaust, releasing the brakes. Now, we know that it takes longer for air to leave a system than it does getting in there. This would mean that there could be a considerable lag between removing your foot from the pedal and the brakes actually coming off. But that's not so bad though, is it? It just takes a bit longer for the brakes to be released. Although, what damage are you doing by trying to drive off with the brakes still applied? Let's now put the secondary and parking brakes in and see what happens there. OK, to apply the park brakes, the driver operates the hand control valve, which exhausts the air from the secondary circuit, allowing the power springs to apply the brakes. However, with a delay between applying the park brake lever and the park brakes actually coming on, if you wanted to apply the park brakes in a hurry, well, you'll have to wait. Oh dear. Let's rearrange this system with some quick release valves and see what difference they can make in speeding up these laggy brake operations. Right then, what we've done here is put some quick release valves near the axle, close to the brake actuators. Let's go through those driver's actions again. When the driver applies the foot brake, compressed air travels down through the quick release valve to the actuators to apply the brakes. No real difference there. When the driver releases the foot brake, the air only needs to come back as far as the quick release valve to be exhausted. It no longer has to travel back up to the foot control valve. So, when the driver releases the pedal, the brakes release much quicker. And that's how we've solved the problem of the service brakes not releasing quickly and where the quick release valve gets its name. Amazing. Now, let's put one in the secondary circuit and see how that works. Right then, when the driver releases the park brake, compressed air travels down through the quick release valve into the secondary chamber of the actuator, compressing the power spring, releasing the brakes. When the driver applies the park brake, the air only needs to travel as far as the quick release valve to be exhausted, allowing the power spring to apply the brakes much quicker. OK, so let's have a look inside the quick release valve and see how it works. Here we have a cross section of a quick release valve. Now, quick release valves come in different shapes and sizes by different manufacturers, but they all pretty much work the same way. There are two main ports on a quick release valve. The first is the supply port, which is connected to the control valve or relay, which is where the compressed air comes into. The second is the delivery port, which goes to the brake chambers. This quick release valve has two delivery ports as it's mounted on an axle. So one for the left actuator and one for the right. 
We also have an exhaust port which is open to atmosphere. The quick release valve, as with most other valves, has three states of operation. On, off and hold. When the driver operates the brakes, air enters the quick release valve at the supply port. The first thing to happen is the air pressure acts on the rubber diaphragm. With pressure above the diaphragm and nothing below, it is pushed downwards, sealing off the exhaust port. With pressure still above and nothing below, the outer edges of the diaphragm are bent downwards away from the valve body, allowing the air to flow through the valve to the delivery ports and onto the brake chambers. The valve is now in the on position. Now this is happening very quickly. And what happens next is that air pressure has built up in the brake chamber and the delivery line. This pressure backs up and is felt on the underside of the diaphragm. With equal pressure above and below the diaphragm, the outer edge of the diaphragm can reseat against the valve body. With the exhaust and the inlet closed, the valve is now in the hold position. When the driver releases the brake application, the air pressure above the diaphragm is released back through the control valve. Air pressure below the diaphragm lifts it, opening the exhaust port, allowing air in the brake chambers to exhaust quickly through the quick release valve exhaust port rather than having to travel all the way back to the control valve. Let's have another look at the quick release valve operation as the driver applies different amounts of braking effort. So, the driver puts their foot lightly on the brake pedal and we'll say the supply pressure is about 30 pounds per square inch. Which means that air will be delivered through the valve and at about 30 pounds per square inch, the QRV will hold. The driver's foot now only has two ways to go, either on more or off more. If the driver applies a bit more force to the brake pedal, the supply pressure will increase. The pressure above the diaphragm will be higher than under the diaphragm, making it flex, allowing more air to be delivered to the brake chamber until the pressure equalises and the diaphragm goes back to its normal position. Once again, we find ourselves in a hold position. Right, this time the driver is going to remove some force from the pedal, but not all of it. The supply pressure above the diaphragm reduces. With a higher pressure below the diaphragm than above it, the diaphragm is forced up opening the exhaust valve, allowing air from the brake chambers to be exhausted through the quick release valve. With the inlet closed and the exhaust open, the valve is in the off position, exhausting air from the chambers. When the delivery line is exhausted enough and the pressure under the diaphragm has decreased enough, the pressure above acts on top of the diaphragm forcing it down, sealing off the exhaust, and places the quick release valve once again in the hold position. The driver is now going to completely remove their foot from the brake pedal. The supply is exhausted through the foot brake valve, and the pressure under the diaphragm from the brake chambers lifts the diaphragm, opening the exhaust port, allowing the air to be exhausted through the valve. The quick release valve is once again in the off position. So, looking at that, the quick release valve is always either in the on, the off, or the hold positions. And this happens very quickly. Let's have another look a bit quicker. And there we have it, the quick release valve, there to minimise the brake lag and speed up the release of the service brakes and application of the secondary brakes. Thanks for watching. If this video has been useful, please give us a like and subscribe to bookmark our channel and keep up to date with the latest educational mechanics videos. We'll have a look at more air brake components in other videos. 
See down in the description for the air brakes playlist. And check out the channel for more videos around all types of vehicle mechanics.